Hello, I am Miss Anne. And I am Miss Janet. And today we're going to teach the first lesson of Joshua, lesson number one. But first we're going to sing, My Lord Knows the Way Through the Wilderness. Our memory verse is Joshua 1, 9, B. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's say that together. Joshua 1, 9, B. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Besides our memory verse, in this lesson three times, it tells us that the Lord God wants us to be strong and courageous. He does not want us to live in fear. And we can be strong and courageous because he promises to be with us always, wherever we are. God the Holy Spirit is with all those who have asked Jesus to forgive their sin. Before I begin with Joshua, Miss Janet will give us a review of the Israelite people. Hello, boys and girls. I just finished teaching the life of Moses. There's a lot of talk about the promised land. Yes, it is called the promised land because about 2000 years before Jesus Christ was born, God promised this land to Abraham's descendants. The part of the land that the Jews have today is still called Israel. Abraham's grandson, Jacob, who, by the way, was also called Israel, moved to Egypt with his 12 sons because of a seven-year famine. That's no rain, which means no crops, therefore no food. Over time, the children or descendants of Israel had so many babies that there were so many of the Israelites that the king or Pharaoh was scared they could take over the country. So, he made all of the Israelites slaves and treated them very badly. When the descendants still multiplied, Pharaoh said all baby boys had to be thrown in the river Nile to kill them so that they wouldn't be warriors to grow up and fight against Egypt. One brave woman asked God for help. He gave her the idea of putting her baby in a floating basket boat in the river where Pharaoh's daughter came to bathe every day. She found him and adopted him and named him Moses. As an adult, Moses had to flee Egypt for his life. He ended up in the desert taking care of sheep. God called him at the burning bush to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt and slavery. Moses did not want to do that. It took 10 terrible events or plagues to convince the king or Pharaoh of Egypt to let the slaves go. In the last plague God sent, which we call the Passover, God sent an angel to kill the firstborn boy of every family in Egypt unless they killed a lamb and put the blood on the doorposts. It was a picture that the Lord Jesus would die to pay for the sins of the whole world 
about 1,500 years later because it was over 400 years that the Israelite people were in Egypt. As God had predicted, the people of Israel were driven out of Egypt that night, 430 years after Israel and his 12 sons moved to Egypt. Pharaoh later changed his mind and chased after the Israelites. God made a path through the Red Sea for Israel, and they crossed on dry ground, escaping Pharaoh's army. Because when the Egyptian army followed them into the Red Sea, it was destroyed when God let the waters fall back into the Red Sea. God provided food and water for his people until they entered the promised land over 40 years later. And until they entered the promised land under Joshua, God led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments and all the laws that Israel needed to be a nation. When they got to the border of the Promised Land the first time, ten of the twelve spies sent in to check out the land reported that there were giants and walled cities, and there was no way Israel could take the land. Israel sinned in not believing God was powerful enough to give them the land he had promised. And there were consequences. They couldn't enter the promised land. They wandered in the desert for 40 more years until all the people over 20 at that time died off. Then their children and grandchildren could enter the promised land. For his sin of striking the rock to get water the second time, instead of speaking to it, as God commanded, Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. And that concludes my review of the life of Moses. And now I turn it over to Miss Anne. And now we're going to go back a little in the story because we're going to start with the first mention of Joshua. The first mention of Joshua the man is in Exodus chapter 17 the day before the Amalekites had attacked the rear of the Israelite people, killing the defenseless, the weak, and the elderly, who could not keep up with the main group. This was nothing but murder. This was not two armies fighting each other. Joshua would have been about 45 at this time. Exodus 17, verses 8 and 9. Then um, Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. Moses chose Joshua to be the leader of the army. Moses tells Joshua he will stand on top of the hill praying to God while Joshua leads the army of the Israelites. Verse 10, so Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. Aaron the high priest and Hur went to the top of the hill with Moses. Verse 11a, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. As long as Moses kept his hands in the air, the Israelites were winning the battle. 11b, and whenever he lowered his hands, Amalek prevailed. When Moses put his hands down, the Amalekites were winning. Verse 12, but Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady till the going down of the sun. With the two other men raising Moses' arms, the Israelites kept winning against the Amalekites. Verse 13, And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. God guided Joshua and the Israelites won a great victory over Amalek or the Amalekites at the end of the day. Verse 14, then the Lord said to Moses, write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua 
that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under the heaven. God said there would be war for generations and at the end, Amalek would be destroyed. This was God's judgment for killing the helpless. Verses 15 and 16. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner, saying, A hand upon the throne of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Moses built an altar to the Lord and called it, The Lord is my banner. Joshua was the leader in this battle. They looked to the Lord God and he won the battle. We hear of Joshua again in Exodus 31 and 32 when Moses received the Ten Commandments from the Lord on Mount Sinai. We learned that Joshua was the man who stayed at the bottom of the hill for the 40 days while Moses was up on the mountain with the Lord God. When Moses comes down from the mountain, Joshua is there waiting for Moses. Exodus 32, 17. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. Joshua is concerned because he thinks a battle is growing on. But Moses says in verse 18, It is not the sound of shouting for victory, nor the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing that I hear. Moses knew that this was a party for the idol, the golden calf that Aaron made, and not a battle. Joshua is also mentioned in Numbers 13. There we learn that Moses sent men to spy out the promised land. As Miss Janet said, 12 men were sent. Among them was Caleb and Joshua. Joshua's name before this was called Hoshea. Verses 17 through 23 Moses tells the men what God's message was. He tells them exactly where to go in the land and where to spy out, and they did as instructed. When the men returned, 10 men spoke of the good fruit of the land, but also of the giants and walled cities in the land. Numbers 13, 33. And the, we saw Nephilim, and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. The ten spies say they felt like grasshoppers compared to the, to the Nephilim men. Numbers 14, 1 and 4. Then all the congregation raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night. And they said to one another, Let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Can you believe that? They want to go back to Egypt, be slaves, and have their children killed. They are not thinking of the miracles of the Red Sea, the water the Lord provided in the desert, the manna or the food provided, and the battles won so far, all through the Lord God. Numbers 13, six through 10. And Joshua, the son of Nun and Caleb, who were among those who spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they said to the congregation of the people of Israel, the land which with we passed through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their protection is removed from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Then all the congregation said to stone them with stones. But the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of the meeting to all the people of Israel. This stopped the people, but because of their choice, the Israelite people wandered in the desert for 40 years, one year for every day the spies were in the land. Verse 38 tells us, of those men who went to spy out the land, only Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb remained alive. Those were the only two men alive to go into the promised land of the 12 spies and of the adults. Now we go to Deuteronomy 31 verses 1 and 2. So Moses said to them, I am 120 years old today. I am no longer to go out and come in. The Lord has said to me, you shall not go over this Jordan. Moses will not go into the promised land. Verses 3 through 6. 
the Lord your God himself will go over before you. He will destroy the nations before you, so you shall be dispossess them, and Joshua will go over at your head, as the Lord has spoken. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave or forsake you. God repeatedly assures the people he is going with them and will destroy the nations so that the Israelites may inherit the land. This is the first time in this part of the story we have two more coming. Verses 7 and 8. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Moses gives Joshua the charge to be the next leader of the Israelite people, and he does it in front of all Israel. Verse 9, Then Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and to all the elders of Israel. Now Moses writes the law on scrolls and gives it to the priests. Moses then gives instructions for when the people are living in the new land, verses 10, 12, and 13. And Moses commanded them, Assemble the people, men, women, and your little ones, and the sojourners within your towns, that they may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. And be careful to do all the words of this law, and that their children, who have not known it, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land you are going over the Jordan to possess. Verses 14 and 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, the days approach when you must die. Call Joshua and present yourself in the tent of meeting that I may commission him. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tent of the meeting. And the Lord appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud. And the pillar of cloud stood over the entrance to the tent. The Lord God appeared to all Israel in the form of a cloud. Verse 23. And the Lord commissioned Joshua the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the people of Israel into the land that I swore to give them, I will be with you. The Lord God himself commissions Joshua to be the next leader of the Israelite people. Three times we have heard these words that are very much like our memory verse. Let's say it together. Joshua 1, 9b. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Deuteronomy 34 tells us that the Moses went to the top of Pisgah and God showed Moses the promised land. He died up there and God buried him. After Moses' death, it was recorded in Deuteronomy 34. We have one more mention about Joshua. Verse 9, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord God gave Joshua the spirit of wisdom to lead the people. In the review that Miss Janet gave us, she mentioned the last plague where God sent the angel of death to Egypt that night. Only homes that were spared from losing the firstborn son were those who had killed a lamb and put the blood on the doorposts and above the door. This is remembered as the Passover. And this was a type or a picture, like Miss Janet said, of what God was going to do for us later in history. We have all sinned and broken our relationship with God. We have lied, cheated, st stolen, been unkind, or had evil thoughts. Our God is a loving God, but he is also a perfect God. He cannot look upon sin. 
That is why God the Father sent God the Son, Jesus, to come to this earth to be born, grow up, and live his perfect life. Jesus never sinned, never did anything wrong. His life was our example of how we should live our lives. That is our goal, but we have all sinned against God. As the blood of the Lamb protected the firstborn, so Jesus went to his death on the cross. He paid the punishment we all deserved for our sins against the Lord God. When Jesus paid for our sin, he redeemed us or bought us back. Now all we need to do is accept this free gift of forgiveness of sin that Jesus offers us. When we ask Jesus to forgive our sin, he does, and he sends uh, God the Holy Spirit to be with us and guide us in our daily lives. The Holy Spirit helps us in prayer, understanding the Bible, and knowing what we should be doing. If you have never asked Jesus to forgive your sin, you can do that at any time or when I come to that part of my prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this exciting story we've seen, how you worked and how you continue to work, Lord. And if anyone has never asked you to be their Savior, to forgive their sins, they can pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know you are God. I know I have sinned. And I know you paid the punishment for my sin. I ask you to forgive my sin. And I know you will send God the Holy Spirit to be with me, to guide me and help me in every day of my life. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember to like our stories and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to reach us, our email is Bible Stories by Ann and Janet at gmail.com. May God bless you richly. See you next time. Goodbye.